Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance to Live channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to watch this video presentation. Thank you. In today's video presentation, I would like to share part three and part four of an article that I wrote in June of 2009. Several days ago, I created part one and part two of the video presentation of the article. I'd encourage you to watch those part those two parts as the, those two parts talk about humility and what I've learned about humility. To read part three and part four, I'll put on my glasses and bring up the article. Again, I want to thank you for your time. You're an important part of my process, and I always enjoy our time together. Here's the article. To Live Beyond Limitations Through Humility, part three of four. Humiliation, on the other hand, scorns the individual. Humiliation's motive is to control and limit. Humiliation undermines self-esteem, self-respect, and self-value. Humiliation stymies creative expression. Humiliation demands justification. Humiliation seeks to disparage, minimize, and marginalize the individual at their very core. Humiliation promotes fear and insecurity. Humiliation undermines enthusiasm and motivation. Humiliation promotes fear. Humiliation cripples initiative. Humiliation squashes hope. Prior to my understanding of the difference between humility and humiliation, I berated myself on a daily basis. I believed that I was the problem and thus deserved to be victimized and humiliated by life and by the people in my world. Consequently, I felt trapped by the voice of criticism and the clamoring of shame. My efforts to be enough were constantly chided as inadequate. Consequently, I developed insecurity, low self-esteem, and low self-worth. I did not believe that I made mistakes, but that I was a mistake. At the core of my being, humiliation charted me as inadequate and unlovable. unlovable excuse me. My attempts to quiet the voice of humiliation that came through shame and criticism only seemed to reinforce the impact that humiliation had upon my life. Unrealistic, unrealistic expectations kept me anxious and depressed. Humiliation reinforced the belief that I could not do enough to be enough. Humiliation inhibited my being through intimidation. Humiliation demanded that I be perfect. Humiliation hindered my ability to find peace. Peace with other people and peace with myself. And now for part four of the article. To live, by limita to live beyond limitations through humility, part four of four. Humiliation rather than humility subsequently reinforced my sense of shame and feeling of inadequacy. Humi humiliation distorted my perceptions and held me captive to the belief that who I was and what I had to contribute in life did not matter. Because of my distorted perceptions, prior to understanding the distinction between humility and humiliation, I could not take the risk to be humble. I had to be hypervigilant. I had to be on guard. With time and through my recovery process, I came to understand that humility validates and heralds my best efforts as good enough for today. Be because I have learned how to trust the process rather than trying to control the process, humility has been able to encourage me to do the footwork and then let go of the outcomes. Now, I don't do this perfectly, but I'm aware and I strive to let go and just do the footwork and then trust God with the outcomes. Through maintaining humility, I am able to re 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 revel, revel 
and what I'm experiencing in the now without fear of reprisal. As I let go of my need to justify, answer, and defend who I am, I am able to be. As I am able to be, I am free to create without the fear of being criticized or shamed for my efforts. Consequently, I am able to focus on excellence or pursuing excellence instead of striving to be perfect with each new day. In the pursuit of excellence, I no longer need to listen to the voice of humiliation <clears throat> or be humiliated by my efforts. Consequently, I can rest through my efforts and live beyond my limitations because I do not have to be I do because I do not have to focus on my limitations. Humility allows me to accept who I am, where I am today. Humility, humility allows me to learn from my experience rather than judging my experiences. Humility, humility excuse me, empowers my perspective and motivates me to learn from my circumstances. Humility gives me the freedom to be who I am, where I am. Humility releases me to live beyond my limitations because I do not have to depend upon my own resources. Humility teaches me to stay in the moment. Humility helps me to find my center. Humility teaches me to trust the process, a loving God, and myself. This is the end of part three and part four of this video presentation series of the article to live beyond limitations through humility before I go let me encourage you with this please do not give up on yourself a loving God or your process because more will be revealed to you and to me in time the pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day, and God bless both you and your family. So long now.